Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Just yesterday, Aptera went out on kind of a media blitz uh, about their petition. If you remember back from their um, webinar where they answer questions, Chris said that he was going to reach out to us for help on the Tesla uh, plug and having that adopted as a standard for the U.S. Well, they've done it now. They made a change.org petition and they've asked people to go and support the petition. And here is the link to the petition right here. And it says, Congress, uh, Tesla superchargers and plugs should be the US standard for EVs. 13,000 of us have signed, I signed up as well, because there's a lot, a lot of reasons that I support the Tesla plug for the Aptera, uh, mainly because I think that they wanna do it. I really don't care what plug they put on, but the Tesla plug is small and it will work well with the Aptera, especially with adapters. Um, so let's read this uh, slowly, talk about why the Tesla plug may be superior, and then we'll talk about some reasons why this may not happen. And then we'll talk about why maybe Aptera is doing this. This is kind of speculation on my part. All right. So while electric vehicle technology has advanced rapidly, the charging standard in the U.S. has not. CCS and uh, J1772, the U.S.'s common standards, are clunky, cumbersome, and expensive. A recent study showed that Tesla superchargers provide the best EV charging experience. Connectors are easy to use. Port is small, convenient, and universal for AC or DC fast charging. Imagine if every vehicle could utilize Tesla's lightweight and incredibly efficient, elegant connector. As founders of Aptera, EV enthusiasts, and electric vehicle charging experts, we believe the U.S. should adopt Tesla's supercharger technology as a standard for all EV charging in the U.S. A Texas program recently disclosed that dis installing a supercharger costs one-fifth of other networks. Given the significant amount of funding our government will be putting into charging infrastructure, we believe that fast charging stations across the U.S. should be based on Tesla standards. If our country began to support Tesla's standards now, we could begin expanding our infrastructure at much reduced cost, saving $4 billion on projected charging infrastructure spending through 2027. Imagine what other EV programs we could support with that $4 billion in savings. If you agree that Tesla's charging standards are good for EVs in the U.S., please help sign this petition, encourage decision makers in Congress to adopt Tesla's charging standards and connectors as the U.S. industry standard with DC's goal for 50% of cars to be electric. By 2030, our country needs to adopt Tesla supercharger and plug standards before another dollar is wasted on inferior technology. Okay, well, we're going to go over this uh, point by point in this video, but at first I want to kind of briefly go over um, uh, what Tesla superchargers are plugs are and other plugs. If you want to know more, uh, there's a video that I made back in May about is Tesla going to, is Aptera going to have the Tesla plug? That goes into more details and I'll link that kind of above, right about here in the video. Um, but this, if you guys don't know what the Tesla charger looks like, it looks like this. It's got the, these two ports are the AC and DC ports. And that's what's kind of one of the things that's different about the Tesla port versus the CCS um, uh, one port, which is what's probably currently the industry standard in the US. Um, and with a Tesla plug, these two can do AC or DC, and the charging system inside the car figures out whether you've plugged into an AC charger or a DC charger and then uses that power uh, uh, accordingly. And then these are the communication ports right here. Um, if, you, if you look at um, like J177 ports, this is the CCS uh, one port. If you look at it, this right here, it's basically a J1772 plug with an additional DC uh, fast charging plug underneath it. So if you want to do AC charging, you just plug this in and these give AC power. And then these are the communication wires. So as you can see, the Tesla, the J1772 has five wires and so does the Tesla. The Tesla has a uh, uh, five wires. It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if you look at that, um, then what's different about this is if you want to do DC, DC fast charging, you plug in this bigger port that encompasses all of this. And these are fairly big, clunky uh, ports. And that's what uh, they're talking about. These things are quite large, actually, um, because you have to encompass all this. The Tesla plug is about the same size as just this part of it. So you have a port that's about this big versus something that's this big. All right, so if you want to re watch the whole video, it's over here. You can look at that. And then um, back when uh, Aptera was answering a few questions, I made this other video back in May, 
and they said, you know, what do you need? What can you charge an Aptera with? And they said J1772 and Chatmo and DC fast charging. Their answer was all the above. And if you look at this, this is a Chatmo plug, which is basically used only by the Nissan Leaf in the United States, but is very popular in Japan. And then this is a CCS1 port. This is like the sort of de facto standard um, DC fast charging in the US. In Europe, the CCS2, which is this kind of plug plus the separate DC ports, is the standard. And by law, the Tesla cars in Europe use this port. Tesla cars in Europe do not use a Tesla port. They use this port. And then in China, they use uh, this uh, GBT port. And so these are the kinds of the standards around the world. Um, but why uh, is the Tesla plug possibly better? Well, number one, um, it's small and elegant. That's true. Number two, you probably don't need to um, pay Tesla any kind of royalty or anything for it. Back in 2014, Tesla released their patents and they are not going to initiate any kind of lawsuit for people that are using their their things and if you look at the list of patents that are supported uh let's see you go down to the bottom here right here this us d694188 that's their vehicle charge connector and their vehicle charge inlet so these are the two that um are the two patents that basically encompass the Tesla plug. And if you look here, I, I looked it up on the US government public patent search site, and here it is. It's Tesla Motors, um, uh, it's Tesla Motors uh, charge port patent. So basically, Tesla doesn't care if people use their port. In fact, they want people to use their port, and um, they're totally fine with it. And so the other thing is, um, Tesla superchargers are currently the most widespread DC fast charging in the, in the country. I think they have about 30,000 worldwide and probably about 20,000 in the US. Uh, the other ports, Chatmo and CCS1 put together are probably have about 5,000 charging stations in the US. So that's a, almost like a fourth of the supercharger stations. So that's way less. Now the uptake of, um, the rate at which CCS1 charging stations are being built is faster than Tesla currently. So at some point they may overtake it, but currently Tesla superchargers run the largest DC fast charging system in the US and the world. So that's another advantage of, of uh, Tesla, adopting the Tesla port. The other thing is, is that um, there are adapters that take a Tesla plug and let you use J1772. That's a very cheap adapter. It's like less than $50. There is one that lets you, if you have a Tesla port, you can use CCS1 that's sold in Korea currently, not available in the US, but people have bought that and somehow modified it and used it in the, in the US. So it is possible. So it's possible to make an adapter that if you have a Tesla port in your car, you can use uh, CCS1 ports. CCS, uh, and then there's already available a Chatmo to Tesla adapter. So those things are all available. So if you have a car with a Tesla plug, you can um, theoretically get access to the most wide range of charging stations. You can access all the Tesla stations, um, the supercharger stations, if Tesla allows it. Um, and you can access Chatmo, CCS1, and J1772. So with adapters, you can access everything. If there aren't adapters that go the other way, um, there's no like uh, ones that if you have a CCS2 port that lets you access a Tesla supercharger, that that doesn't exist. And then, la so then let's go over the reasons that they're saying and see if they hold water. So a recent study showed that Tesla superchargers provide the best EV charging experience. So I looked at that. That goes to this um, thing that says that EV charging, um, uh, Tesla superchargers provide the best EV charging experience. So I looked up the actual JD Power. Um, here's the actual JD Power study. And if you look at it, I mean, it is true what they said. 
that superchargers rank the best, but the difference isn't huge. Okay, so look look at this. Um, Tesla destination chargers rank highest among level two charging stations with a score of 689, Volta 674, and charge point is 660. So you, if you see these numbers, it's it's not like they were way better. They were just a little bit better. Uh, Tesla supercharger ranks um, highest among DC fast chargers with a score of 733. But if you look at DC fast chargers overall, they got um, in ter in terms of ease of public charging, all DC fast chargers got 737, which is actually higher than the Tesla score. But the Tesla score is a kind of conglomerate of ease and availability and cost. And where I think they, the other charging stations lose out is that um, superchargers are free or very cheap for most uh, Tesla owners. Whereas um, fast charging at Electrify America or ChargePoint is, is somewhat expensive. And then availability is a lot less because like we said, Tesla superchargers, there's like 20,000 of them in the US uh, versus about 5,000 for the other things. So availability is a lot less. So they're losing on availability and cost, not on ease of use. So it's not really like the plug was too big and clunky and that, that was the problem. I don't think that that's a big issue um, for most people. And so if you look at that, so that was one of the reasons they said it was um, that they had the best EV experience. That's mostly a function of availability and cost, not ease of use. Ease of use, I think, is fine um, across the board. Then uh, they talked about how a Texas program disclosed that installing superchargers stations cost one fifth of other networks. So I looked into that, and that comes from this. Um, so Tesla superchargers cost revealed to be just one fifth of the competition in losing home state bid. Um, they, are, they are referencing a Forbes article. So I went to the Forbes article, and here's the Forbes article. I try to get as close to the original source whenever um, figuring out any kind of information. So what it was was Tesla, Texas had a program where they were going to give grants to companies to install DC fast charging stations in Texas. And you could put a grant and apply for the amount, and you could uh, your grant could cover up to 70% of the cost of the chargers up to a maximum of 150. Tesla's applications asked for as little as 30,000 per charger, while most other applications claim the maximum 150 and cost perhaps more. Okay, so here's what they're saying, is that they're getting this information. See, they're saying this, this electric uh, article said that superchargers revealed to cost one fifth of the competition. That's not an accurate assessment of, that, of the data. Tesla asked for the one fifth of other companies. It doesn't mean that their chargers cost one fifth of other chargers. They just asked for one fifth. And maybe they, they, maybe, maybe they do cost one fifth of other chargers, or maybe Tesla was just asking for less because they're willing to eat more of the costs of building the charger. Um, so asking for less does not necessarily mean that it costs less. So that was a failure of logic there. So it does not necessarily mean that Tesla costs less than other chargers. In fact, if I looked at this art other article looking at how much do DC fast chargers cost, this is from um, a website for property managers. So people that run uh, commercial real estate and things like that, and they want to know how much uh, installing a DC fast charger will cost because a lot of businesses want to install DC fast chargers to attract customers. So here's the cost that they quote they, to their um, readership. It depends on how fast a DC fast charger is. A 50 kilowatt DC fast charger is probably going to cost about 30,000 installed and 150 will be about 75 and 350 will be 140. So it kind of depends on how fast, how beefy of a DC fast charger you want to install. Um, I, so I personally think that this um, assessment that it costs one fifth is probably not correct. I don't think Tesla's act uh, charging station actually costs one fifth the amount. If you wanted a 50 uh, kilowatt DC fast charger, you can you can get those installed for thirty thousand um, or less. And um, it's possible that Tesla was just willing to eat more of the costs to install more of their chargers in Texas, which I believe is probably the case. Um, and then if you want the faster DC chargers, they're going to be more expensive. So we actually don't know how much Tesla fast chargers cost. I'm sure the cost of a Tesla fast charger, supercharger, 
varies based on whether it's a supercharger one, two, or three, um, how much uh, amperage it's delivering. The higher, like the 250 kilowatt um, uh, superchargers are gonna cost more than the 50 kilowatt um, superchargers. All right, so here's a brief comparison of the different uh, standards. Uh, this was a proposed standard that never got deployed. Here's the, here's the uh, standard in China. Here's the standard in Japan. CCS1 in America, CCS2 in Europe, and the Tesla plug. And here's the differences. So the max voltage of these is about 1,000, and Tesla's is 400. Tesla can, the Tesla ports can handle more amperage than this. They go up to 250 kilowatts. So this is kind of outdated information. Uh, if you, another difference is if you look at the communication protocol, CCS requires a program logic controller. The rescues a CAN bus. Um, there, the vehicle to load or vehicle to home or vehicle to grid does have, is definitely supported in Chatamo. It is now supported in CCS. I'm not sure if it's supported in the, the Chinese connector. It probably is. It is not supported in the Tesla connector. Um, and so this is kind of, a, again, another look. The, this is not to scale. The Tesla port is about the size of the J1772. So this is probably double the size uh, shown in this picture. And then uh, if you're talking about, sorry, I'm, this is looking at the other networks. This is just talking about how um, Tesla superchargers, there's so much more of them. I actually reached out um, to Tesla and they, sorry, to Aptera. And I told them, um, does Chris actually think that this is a possibility that US is going to adopt a Tesla standard? While I agree with Chris that the Tesla connector is great, I think the chance it gets adopted as a standard by Congress is slim to none. And the response was from Chris was, we think with EVs account only accounting for 1% of vehicles on the road, now is the time to adopt the best standard. We really think we can influence legislation here as it's just smart and cost efficient strategy. America has the best tech with Tesla and it should be the standard for all EVs. Okay, so Chris actually believes that this can happen. And so I, I wanna support that. I signed the petition um, and I think that the Tesla plug works great for the Aptera because it's small, it fits really well in the back behind the license plate. And with adapters, you can access all the things, and all the different kinds of charging um, infrastructure. And Aptera is a 400 volt system. So um, you don't really need a CCS1 port uh, to charge a 400 volt system. Some of the things that may make this problematic though, is that Tesla doesn't support vehicle to grid or vehicle to uh, home as of now. CCS uh, does, F Ford F1 Lightning definitely has that capability, vehicle to home and possibly vehicle to grid um, through a CCS1 port. So if that's important, maybe the Tesla plug will not be the greatest. Uh, it, there, we have been told that Aptera will have a vehicle to load function. You know, a lot that's just having an AC port. Uh, Ford F1 Lightning has that in their bed, and like the Hyundai Ionic has it. The other thing that makes adopting the Tesla plug a little problematic is that Tesla plugs do not handle uh, 800 volt DC fast charging. All Teslas are 400 volt systems currently, and I'm not sure if the Cybertruck is going to be an 800 volt system. If it is. Um, most of what I've read says that the, the separation of the charging ports for DC fast charging in a Tesla plug are not far enough apart to support a 800 volt system safely. Whereas the CCS1 port is wide enough to support an 800 volt system and 800 volt systems have advantages if you're running big battery packs. Aptera doesn't have a giant battery pack, so it doesn't need an 800 volt system. But if you want to go back and I made an article about, um, I made a video about Lucid's uh, 900 volt system and why that gives them a lot of efficiency. When they charge, the amperage is less in a, in a higher volt system and that you lose less energy to thermal losses during charging. 
um, in an 800 or 900 volt system. Um, currently, Audi, Porsche, Hyundai, Kia, and Lucid run 800 volt systems in some of their cars. Uh, everyone else is running a 400 volt system, but this is probably the future. In the future, um, cars are going to eventually probably run um, 800 volt systems because they just allow for faster charging. And in order to do that, you're probably going to need a CCS2 um, port or something bigger than a Tesla plug. The te current Tesla plug probably does not support that. Um, the other reason that it probably doesn't, probably not going to happen that um, the U.S. adopts the Tesla plug is that no matter what people want, that's not what Congress tends to do. If you look at this, this was a study um, that looked at all of the different bills and policy from 1980 to two, the year 2000, and they looked at the chances that a bill would pass compared to what percentage of the population wanted it passed. So if 0% of the average population wanted a bill to pass, there was a 30% chance of it passing. If 100% of the population wanted the bill passed, there was a 32% chance of it passing. So it really, what people want it's is not what Congress does. However, if you look at what economic elites, so very wealthy people, the people that donate money to congressmen, um, if if zero percent of them want something to pass, then there's a chance of that passing is about zero percent. If a hundred percent of them want it to pass, the chance of it passing is about sixty five percent. So see, what really rich people who donate money want to happen, if more of them want it to happen, there's a higher chance of it happening. If less of them want it to happen, there's a less of a chance happening. But if you're just the average Joe, what you want isn't what happens. So, you know, us doing this uh, change.org petition, probably not going to change Congress's mind on anything. And lastly, it's it seems unlikely that... Um, like Ford and Audi and Porsche and every, you know, Hyundai, Kia, every other EV manufacturer, uh, VW, is going to not fight having a Tesla plug in their cars. It just, and, and Lucid and Audi and Porsche and Hyundai and Kia, they can't use a Tesla plug even if they want to because they run an 800 volt system. So they can't do their DC fast charging with a Tesla plug. So for a lot of reasons, I think it's um, probably not likely to happen. Um, I still think because of how hard they're pushing this, they are going to put a Tesla plug in an Aptera. And I think that'll be great. It works well. Um, and with the right adapters, you can access everything. And my guess, this is just total conjecture on my part, is that this is a way for Aptera to try to get access to the supercharger network. If you look at this tweet, um, so this guy tweets about Aptera starting the change.org campaign. Elon Musk um, replies, cool, so he knows about this. And then Aptera says to Elon Musk, let's talk. So this makes me think, and this was um, 1.55 p.m. July 13th, this makes me think that Aptera has not gotten any kind of agreement from Tesla to use their supercharger network. And they want that to happen. Um, even if Aptera does not get access to their supercharger network, I think that's still fine to have a Tesla plug. You'll still get access to the Tesla destination chargers, which are not fast chargers, but there's quite a few of them. Um, you'll have easy access to J1772, which is what uh, I'm, we're going to use like 99% of the time because I have a J177 plug at home already for my current EV. And uh, most people charge their EVs at home. And with an adapter, you can access uh, CCS1 and Chatmo ports. So um, having a Tesla plug on the Aptera, I think, works out great. I suspect this is um, a mechanism by which Aptera is getting uh, Tesla's attention to perhaps get access to their supercharger network, which if that were to happen, uh, then getting a Tesla plug on the Aptera would be a slam dunk. Okay, well, tell me what you guys think of, um, of, of all this. You know, do you think it's likely that America is going to um, adopt the Tesla plug as a standard? 
I personally don't think so. If they do, I, I don't really have a problem with it, but I think the chances are pretty slim to none. I did sign the uh, change.org petition uh, for them because I want to support them. And I think that um, Aptera getting the Tesla plug is a great idea. Um, I think it fits well with the Aptera. It's going to work fine for um, most of what I want to do with them. And with the right adapters, you can still access the public DC fast charging stations. So that's good. Okay, well, tell me what you guys think in the comments. Um, thanks again to all of our supporting members. Uh, we really appreciate them. I appreciate all your comments below. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.